Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you guys how to create an Ubuntu VM on your Synology NAS. Now Synology utilizes a Linux kernel in its build but doesn't necessarily make it exactly the same as Ubuntu. They've done a bunch of stuff on there and I know there's a lot of back and forth about the you know uh, what's free and what isn't inside Linux and Ubuntu desktop systems but today I want to show you how to create that Ubuntu virtual machine on your Synology NAS so you can have all the advantages and freedom and ease and access of Ubuntu in a virtual machine that's accessible on your Windows or Mac system. So moving forward let's go through what we're going to need for today's video. First and foremost we're going to need a copy of Ubuntu. Now you can head over directly to their own website where they've got free downloads nice and straightforward. There's not only the version 18 which is the current most stable version but there's also experimental versions for the up-and-coming uh, in the future you can choose to go for whichever one you want but for now I would recommend for stability going for 18.04 at this time of recording. Once you've downloaded that file either pop it onto a USB stick and then transfer it over to your NAS alternatively upload it directly to the NAS from your system. That's something I've already done before the start of this video. Next you have to make sure you're using a NAS with sufficient hardware power to create this Ubuntu VM. Now I'm using a DS1019 Plus because although it is not the cheapest NAS, it does give you a great balance of hardware and software from Synology, allowing you as a great entry point into the world of using this kind of storage and hardware. Now there are smaller ones like the 718 Plus and 918, but I do think the 5-bay gives you the best storage options available to you as well as 8 gig of memory and an Intel Celeron based processor. Now this is important. Because in order to properly take advantage of Virtual Machine Manager, you need to make sure you're using a Synology NAS that has at least an Intel or Pentium or Xeon 4-core processor. That is a 64-bit x86 based chip. This is because you're going to need several cores so you can support both the NAS and the VM, but also because it has to have that kind of proficiency and in often cases embedded graphics or uh, hyperthreading. So, make sure your processor in your NAS is one of those. Additionally, make sure you've got between 4 and 8 gig of memory at least. This copy of Ubuntu, for example, recommends at least 4 gig of memory. I'm going to be dedicating just 2 gig just to show you the difference. But for now, make sure that you're dedicating at least 2 to 4 gig to your virtual machine and leaving some memory left over to the NAS. Because whichever memory you dedicate to the virtual machine, when the VM's in operation, it will completely cut off that memory to the rest of the system. So make sure you've got enough memory in your NAS to support both things at once. And if you're running programs like Surveillance or Plex Media Server or more, remember that they have a preset memory requirement. So make sure you've got enough memory to support all of your different applications and systems at once. So we've got VM Manager, we've got our copy of Ubuntu, Let's get started. Install the Virtual Machine Manager application from the Package Center. It's completely free and available via the drop-down very, very easily. Older, up, less updated systems may still find the app inside the Beta Package Center, but the majority of you now, with the latest version of DSM 6.2 coming up on 7 at the end of the year, will find it down here, Virtual Machine Manager. Click uh, Download and then Install and then open the app. Once you open the app for the first time, it will offer you a couple of options. One, to install a virtual network, and another one, to install the guest tools. Both of those I'll talk about later in the video, but for now I recommend just following the default options that it provides to you to make sure that your virtual machine has network and internet access via the ports on the physical NAS. From here, click Create, and then from Create, for this particular VM, because it's Linux based, we're going to have to select the Linux option. From there, click Next. After that, it will ask you to select which storage pool on your NAS or volume is going to be utilized. I've only got the one, and I'm utilizing a single drive here that has a Synology Hybrid RAID or SHR. That's required for a virtual machine using Synology's own software. So make sure you're using a volume that's SHR. Sad to say, but this means that if you don't have SHR or indeed BTRFS set up on that volume to start with, 
then you may need to create a brand new volume in order to take advantage of Virtual Machines Manager's options on this VM. After that, click Next, and from here, give it a name. For now, I'm going to call it Ubuntu 18. I'm going to dedicate two of the cores of my four core CPU to this, and I'm only going to dedicate four, um, two gig of memory to this VM. Now it's worth bearing in mind that of course I could dedicate all the memory if I chose. I've only got four gig of memory on this device, even though it's supposed to have eight by default because I've been doing some testing. But for now, stick with two gig just to show you how it's gonna run, but I recommend you go for higher. The video card will of course make a difference, but for the most part, VM VGA will be sufficient for a standard VM. If you need something a bit more bespoke, you can always change it. After that, click Next, and it will ask you how much storage you want to dedicate to this virtual machine. I'm going to dedicate 200 gigabytes. Obviously, you can increase that volume uh, as you want during the VM, and you can tailor and change a number of the VM options even after it's been set up, although you will need to power it down. This storage will come directly out of the storage area that you're dedicating to this VM, and it will partition this space to make sure it can't be overwritten. Click Next, and then there's that default network we set up to ensure that this VM can access the network and the internet. So it should be selected by default, the one that you created, although you can create more if you so choose. I'm gonna leave that option for now, because it's quite technical. Click Next, and from here, we set up some of the basics of our virtual equivalent to a physical machine. First and foremost, we have to make sure we have the right ISO for boot up. An ISO is an image of a disk. All the data is laid out in a way that the system can read it like a digital created version of a CD, DVD or Blu-ray. For now, click Browse and find where you uploaded that Ubuntu copy um, of uh, that, copy, that CD you got. There's my copy there that I downloaded a short while ago. Not the latest version, it's one version down because they update it quite regularly. From there, click Select. And then after that, it will ask you if you want to install an additional ISO file. Now, the other thing it asked you to download when you first installed Virtual Machine Manager was the, Win uh, the Synology VMM guest tool. This is less useful here, as this is more to do with installing Windows applications. But I recommend having it anyway on your system, just because of all the drivers that it includes. For now, I'm going to leave it, though. Down here, choose whether you want it to boot up every single time you boot up the NAS. You can even freeze frame it if you so choose, as it's a virtual machine. Then select the BIOS you're going to be using. For now, I'd leave that as recommended unless you're using a very particular system. Keyboard layer obviously will be depending on where you are in the world and which keys respond to what. And then on top of that, the virtual USB controller will allow you to not only assign USB ports that are on your physical NAS to the VM so you can connect storage and peripheral devices, but you can select whether you want them to be the protocol of USB 2 or 3. Though of course you can't select USB 3 protocol on a physical USB 2 port. Once those are done, you can then click Next and Continue. From here, all the users that are listed on your NAS will be listed, and then you can decide who has access to this VM. For now, I'm only going to let the admin access this VM, but you can set things up the way you see fit. After that, click Next, and moving forward, we can see in the background here all of the specifications that we've set for our VM ready to go. I'm going to click Power on the virtual machine after creation, and then click Apply. This is now going to take all of the settings and values I've given it and convert it into our Ubuntu VM. This VM, when it's powered off, will allow us to select a number of the options. We can even scroll through a number of the settings that we've created, but we can't alter them while the VM's in operation. In order to access our VM, click Connect while it is running. Now, I am using the screen recording software OBS. This may affect the output of what we see during the course of this video. Bear that in mind as this is nothing to do with Ubuntu or the Synology NAS, but more to do with my local system and how we see the Ubuntu VM operate in real time. Right now it's setting itself up for the first time use, utilization and use, and we should see this VM running very shortly. At the moment, it's gonna go through the standard boot options, but as it's a virtual machine, 
there will be slight differences between this and a physical installation. We're accessing it via a web browser on the IP locally, but there's lots of ways in which to do it, such as using the VNC viewer tool or remote desktop connection utilizing the IP. This also counts for if you're accessing this VM over the internet or use, you know, in coffee shops or using train Wi-Fi, but bear in mind, you will need a steady internet connection to access a VM with the perfect um, speed and fluidity as if you were a local machine. But connecting it over a local network should be absolutely fine. Ubuntu is still now setting up for the very first time and it's worth highlighting that there are other options here on the side that allow you to heighten or lower the resolution of the screen you're seeing to give you a lower latency speed as well as giving you hardware push buttons that allow you to either enter things on a keyboard on screen or strict commands like control alt delete that you don't want to press on your local machine because they will only affect your local pc but you want to access them on the vm as you can see on screen it's still installing ubuntu smoothly for us so for now you can either go for try ubuntu which then doesn't install it to the hard drive but runs it off of the cd as a one-off or install ubuntu to completely install ubuntu from uh, beginning to end in order just to show you Ubuntu, I'm going to select the try option, but bear in mind that you more than likely want to use the install option because that will affect all of the files you save and the changes you make and the settings you decide. But for now, I'm going to select try just to show you, but I recommend you select Ubuntu uh, install if you want a far more reliable and steady performance. And also, of course, if you want to use it long term. So this is now going to start beginning the Ubuntu unpacking directly from the disk that we uploaded to Virtual Machine Manager. And as you can see, the utilization of the hardware that we've assigned to this device is maxing out quite a lot. And you can see why they recommend the 4 gig of memory right there. It's now going to be opening from the CD as described. You could ignore all the weird colors on screen. That's just Ubuntu being created and booted up for the very first time. And remember that you've even got options in the Synology Virtual Machine Manager to do lots of things. You can migrate and create a second instance if you have the hardware. You can take snapshots, which are kind of like saves of a VM that you can revert to later on to test things out and make sure that you don't ruin the VM going forward. Ubuntu is now beginning uh, the initialization stage and will be up and running very shortly, giving you access to that great streamlined Linux desktop experience. Remember, there are newer versions out there and you should really adhere to the hardware specifications they highlight to you. And there we have it. There is our Ubuntu VM. From here, we can install applications, run lots of stuff on screen, and remember we are looking at a far more streamlined desktop because we are accessing it in this way. We can scale out and we do lots of different things utilizing this screen that allow us to create a far more uh, desktop friendly virtual machine experience. So I know it seems like all the icons are massive here, but that's only because of the way in which we are accessing this virtual machine for the first time. There's lots of options and configuring Ubuntu is very, very straightforward. We are seeing it loading up for the first time. So just like any PC, it's caching a lot of information in the background and you can download apps very easily. The settings options from the top allow you to configure it very, very easily, such as changing the resolution and more. And remember to use OpenVNC or remote desktop in order to access your virtual machine of Ubuntu nice and easy. And just remember, your Synology NAS is still running in the background for all of your day-to-day -day tasks. But this has been how to install Ubuntu for the, on, as a virtual machine on your Synology NAS. I hope you guys find this useful. And if you have, do click like to help me know what videos you guys like and help me create content moving forward. If you want to learn more, click subscribe as I go through every kind of virtual machine I can on all of the top tier NAS brands. And otherwise, I will see you next time.